Hello. First of all, we'd like to thank Professor Macaranas of the Asian Institute of Management for the invitation for us to share with you some of our experiences in education, which has been found uh, to deliver optimized learning even before the pandemic and has been shown effective during the pandemic and we believe even way beyond the pandemic. Magandang hapon po sa kanilang lahat. So we'll uh, start with some of the perceived During a pandemic, there's a closure of universities and colleges, which inevitably leads to a no face-to-face -face interaction between professors and students. And there are perceived disadvantages to this, like for example, uh, no, there would be no classroom lectures and discussions, which people believe would hinder student learning. Uh, most of the time, they would have online and asynchronous learning, which makes it difficult to track inattentive and unengaged students and often leaves behind those which do not have uh, internet connectivity. And the perceived problem is becomes more serious when there is that question about the fidelity of the exams and assessing the learning gains of the students. And there's also the perception that there is uh, a difficulty, especially when handling advanced topics. And the past year also showed that some teachers are resistant uh, against the training of ICT needed for distance learning. And of course, there's also a concern about the laboratory and field skills, which might not be developed in times of uh, lockdown, for example. However, we think that the no face-to-face -face interaction constraint can be turned into an advantage through a process-induced learning instead of teacher-induced learning, which we have in the CVIF DLP or Dynamic Learning Program. In the program, it compels students to be independent learners, which is best for, for training them for the uh, fourth industrial revolution. And it's very easy to mine and make use of results from neurosciences in this program. The program could bypass the ongoing worldwide lack of mature science, technology, and engineering math teachers or STEM. And it's easy to bypass the lack of gadgets or even the lack of connectivity or stable internet connections in this uh, CVIF DLP. And lastly, it would enable our country to catch up with richer countries uh, in terms of education, performance in education. So this CVIF dynamic learning program, which has been shown to be robust against disruptions in education in many, many occasions, which we started in 2002, it is a systems approach to process-induced learning. It incorporates 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication skills. And this has been applied from the elementary up to secondary, up to college or tertiary levels. So what is this process-induced learning? Maybe we could ask Mervik here. Yes. Here on this part of the screen, uh, we look at the conventional method. Now, this has been practiced before the pandemic, or we could call that normal times. Uh, this has historically been the more accepted method where you have teacher-induced learning. We say teacher-induced because the teacher or the professor plays a very um, dominant role, whether in lectures, giving lectures, or leading classroom discussions. So here, um, then you have the students which, who would be dependent on the professor. So it's common to hear, for example, that uh, students would complain that they do not like mathematics or chemistry or physics because their professor is a terror or he's not good or she's not uh, encouraging enough for the students. That is because in this type of approach, you would have, again, personality dependent uh, personality dependent instruction or education 
And now the problem here is you have undocumented transmission of information. The, the professor might be lecturing or leading discussions. The students might seem to be understanding the lesson, but actually understanding once they are assessed primarily with exams or a few problem sets, then the scores might tell us a completely different story. So you have here the quality control of the learning gains might be difficult. And this is why in the CVIF, in our school, because of this constraint, and it is in a rural area, it was at that time a fourth class municipality, then because of the constraint, constraints that we encountered, we had to devise something new and we call it the dynamic learning program and in contrast to teacher-induced learning, we have process-induced learning. And what does this mean? The professor is not, or the teacher does not really lecture a lot. In fact, lectures and classroom discussions only occupy 10 to 15% of the time. The focus now would be the learning activity sheets, and we, this will be explained later. And this would be accomplished by the students daily. Why do we want them to do this daily? Because this gives us high density documentation so that we can gauge or assess the quality and the progress of learning of the students. And of course, because teachers or professors now do not uh, spend a lot of time in classroom lectures and discussions, the students are doing most of the time independent learning and the daily accomplishment of the learning activity sheets give the, the professors much data for assessment and progress learning, monitoring of the progress of learning. So to Chris again. Yes, uh, to give you uh, more details about the dynamic learning program, there are four non-negotiable components of the DLP, which have been using up to even during the pandemic. The first one is the parallel learning homes, um, which is automatic during, uh, during these times. The second component is the activity-based learning activity sheets, learning by doing, where they, the students do a lot of writing, and there's no introductory lecture before any new topic is being introduced. The third component is an in-house comprehensive portfolio, and the fourth would be strategic rest, which really means nothing beyond the LAS. So let's talk about these four components, starting with parallel learning homes. So we could imagine that during the pandemic, we have all these students in their own homes, and they will be doing the learning activity sheets without any teacher intervention, because that's the very design of the LAS, learning activity sheets. There's no need for tutoring, but once a week, they will be assessed. They will have to submit the activities that they have accomplished. And this will be evaluated by the professor and will be part of the grades of the students. So what is the basic design of this learning activity sheets? It's just one page. It has to fit one page, uh, font 14, so that it will not occupy too much uh, material. It starts with an activity title with one to two learning targets. This has been implemented since 2002. A short concept digest of the topic that has to be introduced, followed by an example illustration. And it ends with one to three questions and everything from the title all the way to the questions should be aligned. Now, this one page learning activity sheets, it is actually a series of activity sheets. Uh, it is based on the philosophy that any complex task divided, when divided into much smaller steps, uh, becomes uh, manageable even for the challenge uh, learner. The step-by-step -step series of learning activities build up toward a more elaborate concept, whatever required comp competency that, that you want. So what is this learning activity sheet? Maybe we could look at an example. Here's an example. Normally, this would fit into one page, but uh, for the uh, PowerPoint, it will occupy two pages. So the activity title would be a geometric interpretation of the integral. The learning target is to 
interpret an integral as the limit of a sum of areas. So it begins with, and the students will have to copy this, in high school, we learn how to calculate the area of plane, figures, and so on. And how do we find the areas for objects with irregular shapes? Now, there are three examples. The first one is given a regular polygon, which is shown on the right-hand side. We obtain its area by dividing that, that space into triangles. Uh, in this case, there would be six triangles, and everybody knows how to calculate the area of a triangle. So area of a triangle times six, and you get the area of this uh, polygon. Example two, uh, more complicated a little bit, would be area of a polygon formed under the linear function x, as shown in the figure. And again, we make use of familiar geometrical objects. And the blue area, we divide into two familiar objects, the uh, rectangle and the triangle, and once you get the area easily of a rectangle and a triangle, then that would give you the area of the, the object on the left. The third example, and this is where we need the calculus, uh, you're asked to get the area under the curve, this under the red curve. So what you do is, this is where calculus is necessary, and we first approximate the area by dividing the region into several rectangles of heights m1, m2, m3, and widths delta x1 up to 3. Then we add the areas of the three rectangles. So we have the area of the uh, height times width of the first uh, rectangle plus the second rectangle plus the third rectangle. And this may be written as a summation, as a sum uh, of the area of the three rectangles. And that would give you an approximate area of the area under the red curve. And then we end with the question, how can we improve our upper approximation for the area under the red curve? And for those um, who are familiar with calculus, you really increase the number of rectangles from 100 to 1,000 to infinite, and then you get the exact area. And the summation sign becomes a, um, an integral. Yes, I would just like to emphasize that the students accomplish this learning activity without any prior discussion by the teacher. So they simply copy or, and draw the diagrams and try to answer the question on their own without any intervention from the professor. So in the CVIF Del P, an ideal learning activity is an activity where zero teacher intervention is needed. That's why it's immune to lockdowns. And in fact, there's a rule. Uh, there should be no introductory le lecture. It's not allowed for each learning activity uh, so that the student will develop critical thinking, problem solving, comprehension, and all these skills needed for the 21st century and for the fourth industrial uh, revolution. Now, there's a, a protocol in the CVIF DLP which has been uh, practiced since 2002. And the, it's uh, stated here, the learning secret, it's not anymore a secret, but don't take notes with a laptop. There are many studies which show that students who used longhand, remembered more and had a deeper understanding of the material. So that's why the learning activities should be copied by hand by each student. So writing by hand. In a paper published in Psychological Science by Mueller and Oppenheimer, they claim that note-taking with a pen rather than a laptop gives students a better grasp of the subject. And in fact, this study focused on college students, 300 students, from Princeton and the University of California, Los Angeles. The Mueller and Oppenheimer study demonstrates that students who write out their notes on paper actually learn more. In each study, those who wrote out their notes by hand had a stronger conceptual understanding and were more successful in applying and integrating the material than those who took notes with their laptops. So, in the CVAF DLP, writing the activities activates both the psychomotor and visual faculties of the brain, as has been uh, observed long time ago by Professor Hebb, that neurons that fire together are wired together, and neurons that fire out of sync lose their link. And when it comes to experiments, uh, especially during the pandemic, we would like to mention that Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr used a lot of this so-called Gedanken experiment 
which is a German word for thought experiment, and they were able to discover a lot of laws in, in nature. And also, you can devise of uh, simple experiments or uh, like the pendulum, which could touch, touch on many areas like for the simple pendulum, which could be a, a shoe tied to a string, which they, everybody has at home. You can talk about acceleration due to gravity, force diagrams, conservation of energy, simple harmonic oscillator, circular, circular functions, waves which are very deep and uh, in physics given a very simple object. Remember that nature is economical in principle but not in structures. And if necessary, simple and cheap physical demo for deep in and insights can be can complement the LAS. There are a lot also of short video clips in, in, in the internet. And all the learning activity sheets that they have uh, accomplished, the students will compile in a portfolio. It's, it teaches them organization. Another skill important for the fourth industrial revolution. The portfolios can be uh, color coded like uh, English for math, um, yellow for, yellow for science. science and so on. Uh, this is just a performance indicator. There are many performance indicators, but in our school, um, these are the number of UPCAT uh, passers that we have. We had 27 last year. And remember that our school has liberal admission and it follows a standard DepEd curriculum. It's not a science high school. It's located in, in presently in a third class municipality. Uh, these are some of our graduates, uh, Ronald Joren who is now doing his PhD at, uh, at the Eteha Zurich. This Eteha Zurich is ranked number one in his area in the world. Another one is uh, our uh, alumna, Madeline Naiga. She's now doing her PhD in Max Planck Institute, which is a very competitive institute. And uh, another example would be Jesha Casanias, who got her P uh, BS in uh, anthropology from the University of California. Berkeley, there are a lot of examples, but we just mentioned these three. So in the CVIFDLP, especially in the pandemic, your problem boils down to the distribution of these bite-sized learning activities. The frequency depends on the uh, state universities and colleges, preferably weekly, so that there would be a routine. It could be bi-weekly at, at, at most. And these learning activities, would provide optimized learning for the students. They have to write by hand to uh, take advantage of scientific research. And with these learning activities, you can easily assess the learning gains with a weekly assess assessment of weekly activities. There's a weekly feedback going back to the subject professor. So in a pandemic scenario, the weekly distribution and collection can be done online if they are, the student is connected or it could be printed uh, at certain drop of drop of points designated drop of points and the CVIF DLP also allows the students to communicate with each other to develop this skill of collaboration and communication another valued skill for the fourth industrial revolution so in the pandemic scenario contrast, contrasting again the conventional and CVIF DLP we distribute learning activity sheets and there's no introductory lecture, zero to minimal teacher intervention, tutors are not needed, and there is a weekly assessment to have this uh, routine. Uh, on the other hand, the conventional method often encounters difficulty, uh, starting with the teachers who refuse to be trained in uh, distance learning. And the mo modules that are uh, distributed, there are thousands of modules out there but there are modules designed for lectures and, and then without connectivity, this becomes difficult. So some questions. During a pandemic, what is the guarantee that each student is learning? Well, in the CVIF DLP, the LAS is copied by hand and answered in the student's own handwriting, which involves the psychomotor, visual, and when read aloud, the hearing faculties of the brain. Another question would be, with the CVIF DLP as distance learning, how are learning outcomes assessed outside of the test? The learning uh, outcomes are assess assessed through these learning activities that the students will have to accomplish day by day in their own handwriting. That's the guarantee. Uh, in the distance, other distance learning, it's copy and paste, and it's hard to 
to check whether the student really did it or not. So the CVIF Dynamic Learning Program, uh, it addresses the learned learner disposition. It's habit forming, daily protocol where students are, are engaged. And it addresses the absence of teachers. The bite-sized learning activities are done independently 80 to 100 percent of the time. It bypasses limited face-to-face -face learning and inexpensive internet connectivity. So if you are a group of universities, you can form yourselves into clusters or consortia. So we have here um, uh, a diagram of, of uh, several universities cooperating. And the important point here is a learning LAS hub. So, for example, in University 1, they have a very good chemistry teacher. They could contribute their LAS to the hub, and the other universities can, be, can, can benefit from that LAS. In one university, they might be good in agriculture, and they could contribute this to the hub, and everybody could share this LAS um, uh, given this uh, LAS made by an agricultural school. And this has been actually done before nationwide when we did our learning physics as one nation where we had 239 LAS and 18 DVDs distributed nationwide and this was actually assessed post-test and pre-test and it was a successful in 2008. Within a university, suppose this is one main campus of a university, then those made LAS made uh, 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 activities can be distributed to several campuses via email and once it goes to one campus then each campus can now distribute that either online or printed copies to barangay halls or drop-off stations or LGU so this is one setup of how you can distribute the uh, LAS and this could be distributed and retrieved weekly or collected weekly so well the outstanding questions during a pandemic um, as we have mentioned before, the DLP, we, we thought of the DLP because of the constraints of poverty and, uh, well, the remoteness of the town that we were working in. But as it turned out, during a pandemic, the, the constraints are simulated and therefore the DLP still works. For example, can students learn well when there is a lockdown advisory or shelter in place to slow down the spread of infection and we say yes they can achieve it is possible to achieve high learning outcomes can superior learning outcomes still be achieved yes is it necessary for professors to guide students in their lessons basically no uh, as long as the learning activity sheets are well designed then intervention becomes optional how about for advanced topics yes uh, i mean Professors' interventions may not even be necessary as long as the activity sheets are well designed. Uh, both Chris and I have taught in college and also in graduate school before we got involved in high school. So we have some idea of how this can be done. Can we bypass the worldwide lack of mature STEM teachers in basic education? And we say yes, as well as in tertiary education. By the way, when we say mature, why do we say mature? That is because when professors or instructors are still immature, everything is important. But a mature professor can actually pick out highlights of any topic and discuss them or compose this compose an LAS in such a way that it is very simple. Are we taking advantage of new results from the neurosciences? Yes. Is there a low-cost educational program that would allow poorer nations to catch up with advanced countries with higher educational budgets? And our thesis is yes. So this can all be done even during the pandemic and beyond the pandemic if we are want to catch up. Thank you. For